I think that it's, um, I mean, certainly there is a, there's, there's a demand within the region for, for, for different types of instruments and different types of support. I mean, if you look at, the, at, at the, the need for infrastructure investment in Asia as a whole, developing Asia as a whole, it's about $8 trillion between now and 2020. Okay. So it's, you know, t for, for us to look microscopically at whether our relatively modest amount of money at $15 billion a year is going to service all the needs for Asia is, 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 is foolish. So there is a huge need for us to be thinking about how do we crowd in as much finance and as much investment as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, there does have to be, in order for that to be sustainable, in order for that investment to actually have the impact you want it to have, these kinds of safeguards, both financial and social and environmental, are critically important. And the countries themselves, while there is, you know, there is a cost to those types of safeguards, um, either in time or in, 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 in money, the, the countries themselves are beginning to recognize how important that is. And I think that if you look at you know, the, 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 the risks that many of these countries face with respect to climate change, with the risks they face with respect to natural disasters, the environmental pollution that we've seen uh, and, it, it, and it exhibit itself in many, many different cities across the region, countries are beginning to recognize how critically important these kinds of safeguards are because it's going to help insulate them from those kinds of problems down the road.